Welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the podcast where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I am Scott. And I am Sam. He's still Sam. I Welcome back, here. everybody. <laughs> We're super excited. I'm sure you're super excited, so that's why you're here. Yep. Um, before we jump into the brass tacks, the thing that's brought us here today, uh, Watchmen Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, it's summer and we're running out of ice. Let's, uh, Ooh, <laughs> let's tell where they can Ooh, find us. It's hot. We are running out of ice. Man, get some of that ice, man. Absolutely. So, so Sam, where can they find us? Where can they send us feedback, comments, things they notice, anything they want to say? All send? right, so you can um, email us at watchingwatchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com. Make sure you visit nerdcyclopedia.com. That's where you can get all the wealth of information that we do on nerd culture, right there on the website. Mm -hmm. You can follow us on all your social media outlets, Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, right at nerdcyclopedia. Um uh, make sure that you download our podcast um, on Spotify. Uh, I was about to say Twitter. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, <laughs> uh, Stitcher, not Twitter, Stitcher. Um, make that's sure right, that you right, subscribe right. to us on YouTube. You know, we got our stuff up <laughs> on there. You know, anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast, we are on there each and every week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those that are watching, like, I guess you guys, thanks so much. <laughs> I really appreciate you sticking around, coming back. Those that watch the uh, instant take, again, thanks so much. I uh, got some real exciting stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. Some real, uh, real high octane guests. We're not going to talk right. about them until they're in the can. That's yep. the rule. Yep. There you uh, go. But uh, we are super excited about it. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Keep check here. Uh, you can check on our feeds on Twitter. Uh, we'll be putting some stuff up about those. Um, we're going to be going in some real interesting directions with this. Uh, long story short. We're going to have some industry people. Uh, we're going to have some academics. This is going to be a really, really interesting podcast. We're going to go through this from a perspective you're just not going to get anywhere else. Yep. Bottom line. Yep, yep, yep. Stay tuned because we got some action pack, you know, some real deep dives. You know, make sure that you're watching Watchmen with us. Also, yeah. make sure that you're checking out our previous podcast from our previous season because we binge. Well, we binge. We, uh, we podcast all 12 issues of the original uh, Watchmen series. Each and every issue, we um, did a separate podcast on, so make sure that if you are just getting into the show and you don't really know anything about the um, you know, the comics and you don't really have time to read them, you can listen to our podcast right on your, um, uh, right in your car, you know, as you're commuting to work or, you know, as you're driving home from work and everything, or in your office and lunch and everything, or when, or even when you're waking up. Or if you're, if you're unemployed, unemployed just be in your house somewhere. <laughs> and nothing else better to do but yeah. listen to a podcast. It better be <laughs> one of ours. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we demand that. Uh, that's what we ask for from our listeners. So, uh, and that's so we're Sam super excited about watching that. Watchmen. So make sure yes. that you you know you um you just tag that. We're we everywhere. So we are indeed. So so then that's the housekeeping out of the way. Um, for me, you can also catch me. Uh, my t personal Twitter is at Steel City Hitch. And my Twitch is SC Hitch. I speedrun Nintendo games from like the 80s. That's what I do, just to give you an idea. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. That and my okay. um, my Twitter handle is at Dog Pound Brown. That's at D A W G Pound Brown. All right. So just make sure you follow me, follow um, Scott. Make sure you follow us at Nerd Cyclopedia again. All right. And make sure you subscribe to us because we'll actually remind you again to do that at the. Um, into the podcast here, so we're gonna say it a bunch. I mean, that's just—it's part of the business, it's right? Part it's of one the of the things All you right. expect us to do. Uh, we're just gonna do it. housekeeping out the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the housekeeping's done. Let's get into the show. Let's get and into the um, so, like Sam said, we did an entire uh, reread, and we did a podcast series about the original source material. So, if you have questions about what's in there, it's a great place to check out. Um, Let's talk about the episode. Uh, this, this episode, season one, episode one. Usually they call those pilot, but they were pretty confident on this one. Uh, this one's titled, It's Summer, and yeah, we're running, running out, out of ice. ice. Now, Sam, mm -hmm. do you know that reference? Well, apparently it's from Oklahoma. So, yes. So, you know, I, um, yeah, after a, few, a couple rewatches, I figured that, you know, figured <laughs> that out and everything, especially um, with the way the episode ended off. Let me just break this first scene down. So, basically, I guess we start off with a silent movie that comes on the screen, and we see, like, a hooded figure of a horse t um, taking out a perpetrator with his lasso, you know. Yeah. And the hooded figure accuses, um, you know, him of stealing, like, you know, cattle and everything. Um, yeah. There are a bunch of church people that come out the, um, there are a bunch of people that come out of the church, 
and a boy instantly rec recognizes um, the hooded figure as Bass Reeves. So Bass apparently, Reeves. you know, he's a real, you know, um, he, he's real, he, you know, he's a real um, a figure that was a, um, a police, uh, uh, he was an officer, uh, he was a black deputy, um, U.S. Marshal um, from, you know, um, right around the Mississippi River. And he caught like a lot of, you know, criminals and everything. He was really astute as far as his detective skills and everything. And his, and he never got wounded, as they say. So his legend like grew. Um, so, you know. The we, Lone Ranger was based on him. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Lone, well, ain't, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. The Lone so Ranger the other thing. Mm-hmm. The other thing to point out about the silent movie portion of the opening scene is that even in 1921, the white hat, black hat thing right. was trope. So having the um, the hero of the piece ride around in a hood, a black hood and a black cape uh -huh. would have been seen as a breaking of that trope. Right. So it's something that's very, very interesting. Right. Um, he says... Uh, Bass says, "No mob justice today. Trust in the law. <laughs> trust and, in the law." As a, as and, as the boy in the um as, as and then we um sort of pan out and then we mm -hmm. we we pan off the um the screen of the silent movie and then we see a boy who was really into the movie. He's just so nice and sweet and is really um you know into the movie. We see his mom in a in a really in a really scary fashion um playing a piano to yeah. you know as as to soundtrack to the silent film and everything and the boy you know very um, scared yeah very, very scared very frightened and everything there's we a don't key know. change yes and there's a real dark key change and everything and we don't know why she's scared but we see the boy and he's just distracted and you know looking at the movie he sees the bass reeves saying you know trust in the law and everything he repeats what he sees right on the screen and everything he's excited because he sees uh his his hero on the screen you know, mm -hmm. he, he he has this impression that everything is good and, you know, you trust in the law. Um, that his that is his inspiration. Mm -hmm. And um, this is also, you know, more context for media at the time. Birth of a Nation came out a couple years before this, which is just yeah. a yeah a very a, a reprehensible film um, uh, shot in that way. But that was probably probably more emblematic of how mm -hmm. black people were shown in media at that time. Right. Um, so. But Bass Reeves is this is going to be again. It's a special thing. It's different. Right. It's not. It's not like all the other media and its representation, which we know is important now. Right. Um, and so those are all interesting things. Um, immediately, we have things exploding, and we have dust flying off the screen, like the theater ceiling. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Have... The, uh, the 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 dad comes in and you know um, mm -hmm. Tate tells um his boy and his wife that you know it's time to go and they um you know are led outside of the theater. You know, the um, dad gives his uh, mom a gun. You know, they're led outside of the theater, and then we see chaos ensue. You know, and then we get the um, get, we get the flash of letters. Um, Tulsa, you know, Tulsa, 1921, is where you know, the setting mm -hmm. takes place. And all this chaos, you know, just ensues. And this is a real historical event as well. Um, this is the 1928 uh, Tulsa, uh, I think they call it the Black Wall Street, 1921. Attack. 1921. Sorry, yeah. I'm all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. So 1921, and um, essentially, there's an there's a video we're gonna post a YouTube video from Emory University that explains this in in better detail than I'm gonna be able to. Uh, the gist of it is that a uh, a young black man was accused of assaulting uh, a white woman, mm -hmm. and when he was arrested, mm -hmm. some of the um, the leaders of the black community went down to say, what's the meaning of this? He right. was on an elevator with this woman for one floor. There's no way. I mean, right. you're accusing him of something that's physically impossible. Right. And when that happened, um, because the business leaders and the leaders of the black community felt they had the standing to do that, it caused the white community of Tulsa and specific elements of it to react violently, right. which essentially precipitated the, they call them riots, but they're really one-sided, the right. destruction of the, um, of the black um, economic center, and they're bas basically destroyed the black population of Tulsa in one day. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's crazy how um, how an event that no one had real proof, it was more or less he say, she say, um, got to a point where it got escalated um, to a point where 
uh, you know, the riots happened. You know, I mean, they even got to a point where they were sending in World War Two, um, you know, machinery, you know, plane, you know, planes and stuff to to bomb the town and everything because it got so bad to where that um, to, you know, to where they they just had to you know um, bring in like a whole army to to take out the town and everything, all based off a rumor. Uh, and that's how crazy stuff that happened back in the early, you know, early 20s and stuff, you know, early 1900s, basically, um, the very, the very um, aspect of a rumor um, mm -hmm. and no, no proof of an incident and everything just caused like chaos, you know, um, mm -hmm. a, a black man touching a white woman or whatever, you know, was just um, it, it was just calls for like, you know, chaos. And this is what happened. What this is what escalated, and it um, resulted in the fact of almost 300 people being killed. You know, or, you know, um, black. You had black um, babies being shot. You had um, one, one women being shot. Of course, you had you know men being shot, children being shot. Um, but there was one shot in the um, very first scene of a a boy holding a. A mm -hmm. young toddler, which was just so sad, and the toddler was dead. I mean, it, the scene flashed really quick, and it would have really been like you know probably gratuitous to have like a guy actually shooting a blade baby and everything. But they had to put that context um, in there because the the whole scene is just really gruesome. Yeah, and necessarily so. Right. I think that you know this is and 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 the way the rest of the episode proceeds, you know, this child his harrowing escape. Uh -huh. from Tulsa. Right. This, you know, I saw this pointed out elsewhere, but I did write it in real time, so I'm going to say <laughs> it. It's a very much a Superman-esque uh -huh. origin story. Uh -huh. The destruction of the home, mm -hmm. the the sending away of you, in a, like, you're sending you away, uh, the written, the, you know, watch yeah. over this child. Right, right. Getting in, and right. then, getting and then leaving the and being sent right. away from this yeah. doomed place. Mm -hmm. um, so there are echoes of the Superman story um, there is, you know, and, and this sets up, um, I think the racial conflict angle of what you're going to see with the authorities versus the seventh cavalry this yes. year. It's, it's, and it really sort of brings that, it brings that into view in a way right. that other media haven't because vigilantism mm -hmm. is real. Yes. There's a real history of vigilantism and the way that it's been done has been in a very, it's been utilized by white supremacists in this way right. repeatedly. Right. And so you have to deal with the consequences of that, I think. Right. When you point. talk about American superheroes. Right. And so if you want to have vigilantes that are going out and doing good mm -hmm. and making the decisions and mm -hmm. doing things the right way, you have to acknowledge that it, that it's not always like that. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And it and it also brings it to the whole um, um, a picture of why the show and, you know, why the show is called Watchmen, okay? Who polices the police? Who watches right. these vigilantes? The whole the whole thing about Watchmen is um, not about the actual, you know, there is no Watchmen, you know, a, a team mm -hmm. of people um, the, of, of a name being called, like it was in the movie, you know, the, the group in the movie was actually called the Watchmen as far as superheroes. Right. Zack Snyder didn't really <laughs> understand that, but he figured that, you know... Yeah, he had, he, yeah, he had he to cut wanted, stuff for time. You yeah, know, he, history... He, that stuff and that stuff's got to go. He he wanted to hold your hand and everything. This show is clearly not holding your hand, and you have to you actually have to figure out why this show is actually will call Watchmen for the un uninitiated. You know, throughout like the um throughout like the episode and probably throughout like the series itself. But Watchmen is called that because who polices the police? Who polices the um? Who watches over those who watch over us? You know. Yes. Um, and, uh, and is, is there, are they justified? You know, you got this, these, 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 um, white supremacist vigilantes, you know, watching so-called watching over their people and everything who watches over them, who, who, who gets to dictate justice for, for those who are underprivileged and everything It's and it's just mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff that's in the context of it that just makes it, you know, a question of what is white and what is right and what is wrong. How far can police go? Yes. You know, how, it, like, you know, the, the racial inversion of the first traffic stop that's the next scene, which which I'm not ready to go to yet, but I want to mention. Okay. Uh, to, on, on your point, right? So these are illustrative factors that it takes a historical moment in history and says, like, how does how do you feel about that? And then how should you feel about that, right? Right. And that's that's what good what good art does. Yep. Um, I want to mention before we do move on from the Tulsa riots, two things. One, okay. uh, these riots were Memorial Day, 1921. Okay. Memorial Day. And 
oh ob who is the uh the boy's father's name is called ob a couple times uh, he's dressed in a u.s army uniform right um so you know there wasn't a whole lot of uh i guess they weren't supporting the troops 100 percent back then so <laughs> probably not all right that, so was a, that was the yeah that was a that was a later a later change so so those are the Tulsa riots, and they're super heavy duty, and, and they're a real historical event that I encourage our readership or listenership to to learn more about. We'll post the video in the show notes. Um, you oh, know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing too. Like, as soon as the episode ended, it was a bunch of stuff I seen on Twitter and on like you know in the the um, inter- internet, you know, internets, <laughs> the stratosphere, the um, the interwebs about the the Black Wall Street Tulsa riots and everything where it wasn't there before. So you got all these, um, you know, um, um, accounts just posting things that that really should have been there before that a lot of people didn't know about. I, I was reading a lot of people was like, OK, is this, this is fake. This didn't really happen. This wasn't really real and everything. Well, it was a real thing that actually happened. And they're just now noticing, you know, that was part of history that actually was being buried because the history mm-hmm. of what happened afterwards and how they tried to cover it up and bury it is another story in itself and everything. They tried to destroy records. They tried to bury like, you know, evidence and everything of mm-hmm. all that stuff happening, even though, you know, so many people died. Um, it's just a, a, a crazy thing about about how history is presented after a certain time period and everything and how people try to um, whitewash it as, as they say, you know, um, to, to their, to, to their benefits. But, and let's think about something else too. I mean, the main action of the comic book essentially uh-huh. is a surprise, you know, so we're now we're suppressing the information about the action to that comic book. Right. Right. right so it's right, also, right. it's also a parallel of that in that, you know, uh, we've been taught, we've been obviously texting and we talked, but, you know, and because we read the comic books and we understand how the comic book plot goes, the racists are technically correct about some stuff. Yes. Right. Like they're yes. technically correct. Like right. Rorschach's journal. Real. For in, the most in, part, in, as far in, as we in know. The, in the context of the uh, the universe. Yes. They are technically correct. It was present- in this one thing. Let's be clear. So <laughs> let's, not, let's not get let's not get me canceled from the Internet. Okay. They're correct about the fact that Rorschach's journal is a, a legitimate well, first hand source. Right. Well, That's the well, thing. That well, correct. Before we get to the next scene, let's just talk about well, what we're referring to is a, a thing called the Pedia um, Pedia pages. Um, yes. The thing that's that's um, Pedia 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 or whatever. Right. You can you can Google it and it's right on HBO dot com. So it's basically going into like a history of documents, a documented history of things that happen right directly after um the the dimensional incursion event <laughs> IE, you know what happened right after the squid um went into you know where the squid um killed the three million people in new york you know after the end of watchmen what they do with it is i mean it makes a lot of sense from the in, in the context of where they are I, I highly recommend that we might even do a whole other podcast yeah well we'll we'll, 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 we'll get into a, just... a, another whole podcast but make sure that you guys check that out because it's a really good read Okay, so let's transition to the um, next scene. We get um, okay. um, the scene transitions out um, into the present with a song be, um, from Future, you know, called um, Crushed Up. So that was a really crazy, you know, um, hip hop, you know, transition. And it appears as if the guy in the truck is playing, the, you know, the music and everything. He's listening to, you know, this music in his truck and everything. And then we see him being pulled over by the Tulsa, you know, police. Um, Mm -hmm. the officer walks up and, you know, gets his consent to record their interaction. Do you consent? (laughs) Do you consent to recording this interaction? So here's, here's some of this stuff. So basically the, the, the summary for the rest of this particular scene Uh is, um, you know, it's a tense traffic stop. Um, the black policeman who's wearing a mask over his face from about here down, Uh I'm shut my nose down, (laughs) um, is, you know, being kind of, you know, standoffish. So it says, what's your haul in? He says, can I look in your car? He says, can I see your face? And that makes everything very tense when he has to see the cop's face. Right. And then uh, there's a Rorschach mask in the dashboard. Right. Which prompts the police officer to take the license and registration and then ask to have his gun released by the, <laughs> the powers that be. He gets a guy named Panda who's a stickler, it seems, about all these sort of reg- rules and regulations. And then, right when he can finally draw the gun, uh-huh. the uh, the uh, white supremacist traffic stoppy shoots him using a, a silenced Uzi 
Very Silent. similar to the silence doozy that Rorschach finds in uh, the comedian's uh, right, closet back in right, 85. Right, right, right. Great callback. Great callback. Excellent callback. And shoots him a bunch of times. Uh-huh. And uh, then throws a head of lettuce at throws him, Throws a right? head of lettuce and everything, yeah. Throws a head of lettuce at him and then leaves. Now, one of the things, um, the firearm lock release, the whole panda thing, uh-huh. the mask, asking the consent, the fact that the driver's car has a battery level of 54%. Yeah. Uh, all these things are, are sort of unsettling. Now, I am of the opinion that this police officer is shot like 30 times. Is that what it seems like? Yeah, he, yeah, like, he, was, lot, he was shot. Right? He, I didn't count, but he was shot a bunch of times. Well, right. <laughs> Hyperbole, Sam. It's okay to use one. So, uh, about, about someone who's riddled with bullets. Right. Um, so we cut from here and we cut to Wait, hold Oklahoma. Up. Hold, hold, hold up, hold up, back up. One more, so the, one more so, you got, one more you got. So, so, so the battery's at 30% in his car. So are we led to believe that cars in this alternate, you know, alternate universe are electric? I think, yes. And that is in keeping with the Watchmen universe because electric vehicles and their charging stations is how Adrian Veet made his money in 1975. Right. So they had them and then... But this truck seems like it has some sort of gas power to it. It doesn't right. seem like it's really electric. Okay. Um, in okay. a few scenes, there do seem to be cars that are fully electric, and I'll talk about that when I see how creepy. Okay. Well, there's some creepy cars later. Okay. Um, but it seems like there's probably some sort of gasoline conversion to electric working in this in this case. Because right, there's right. a gas tank and a battery level. Right. Uh, and a battery level. Right. Again, the PDPedia articles go into this more. We're going to get into the that media when we get, when we get to that media. Um, right. I'm right. we might do a I'll at least write an article. I'll promise I'll put something up yep, yep, on yep. the internet about this yep. later. So, um, Black Oklahoma, which yep. is what they, they call it in, in the show. So, it's a cast of black people performing the show Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Um, we are introduced to Don Johnson, <coughs> whose name is Judd Crawford. Judd. Judd. He's wearing a cowboy outfit. Someone comes in to tell him what's going on. Mm-hmm. He is taken to the hospital where we are told the following things. <clears throat> Number one, the cop's alive. <coughs> Which is which is uh, uh, unbelievable. After being shot thirty times and everything, that, he is that big al- purple splotch of blood on his like right. on his radio. Right, right, right. He's a lot. So I, I, they may wear they might automatically wear armor. So uh, who knows? Know. It could be you so know. many different things that right. are causing this. Uh, you know, again, we'll, uh, we'll save the speculation <laughs> earlier. <laughs> like again, the, these this material, this supplemental material they're putting out on HBO.com is excellent. I recommend checking that out. Um, so uh, Judd is taking to the hospital where he asks uh, Looking, Glass, Looking Glass, who is wears a mask that is a mirror. Yes. Um, where's great, my great uniform? Mask. Great mask. Tim great Blake mask. Nelson is playing mm-hmm. Looking Glass, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Looking Glass asks, should I call Red and Knight? We don't know who that is. He says, nope. He says, Knight's going to be pissed. <laughs> so she's going to be pissed. Oh, yeah. She's <laughs> in, in, in his country accent and everything, you know. Oh, um, uh, so right before that, doesn't he go to the, um, the, 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 um, cop's wife's house? And... That's it after this. Oh, that's after, okay, all right. I'm jumping it ahead is. of you. <laughs> it, it is. So, the cop's alive, and he looks all, all right. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he looks like he's wearing, like, just a regular patient thing, yeah, and he's got right. some stuff on his arms to cover the IVs, but he doesn't look like... I mean, I've seen, I mean, I know people that have been in car crashes that'll right. look worse than that, you know yeah. what I mean? And right. That's so that's that that's something that stuck like stuck out to me. Like, why is this guy alive? Right. Not that I was upset. About, right. Why is he alive? Right. Okay. So we cut from him from uh, from Judd telling uh, Looking Glass not to call in uh, Red and Knight, who we'll meet later, and we cut to these black SUVs that are driving in formation in close formation uh-huh. through the suburbs, mm-hmm. dead silence. Right. Not not a decibel. Right just silently flying through the suburbs in formation, which was just it's so creepy, especially after we know, I mean, we know other cars are loud, right? We've already seen it. This isn't normal. It's, it's abnormal. It's like ghosts flying well, around well, in the night. If, if, if I, uh, have you ever um, been in an electric car or, you know, a car that has like a hybrid and everything? An electric car? <laughs> well, I have sure, a this hybrid. Is America. Sure, this is America. <laughs> I know, right? I, I have a hybrid, and the one compliment I get on the car on a car every time I have it on the electric side is that the car doesn't make a sound, you know, when you park it or when you move. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just, just and when you turn it on, it doesn't even, you can't even hear, you know, I pulled up to my dad's one day um, and he was like, I didn't even hear you pull up. I'm like, okay, that's because my <laughs> car is, I, I had it on like the electric and everything. So the, the, those type of cars are really silent and it really goes into what we were talking about before about this, this alternate, you know, alternate history having a bunch of electric, you know, running cars. Yeah. So, so they're cut. So there's those electric cars were really creepy to me. Um, <laughs> Judd is now in his full uniform in his police. He's got four stars. He's uh-huh. the chief. Okay. You know, now he's the chief of police. Right. He goes to Charlie's house. Mm-hmm. Charlie's wife is named Roberta. This is a really nice house, which I'm just going to point out once. This yeah. is really nice. Yes. I mean, yes, obviously he's, yeah. you know, I, it, it seems that the police are being taken care of very well. Yeah. Um, you know, I would, I would say they deserve it from what we've seen so far for sure. Right. I mean, Ooh, like, especially what we learned about, you know, about, um, you know, cops and what they've been through and everything. They deserve to be taken care of. Shout out to all our police force and, you know, um, all our servicemen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, so, so Judd tells Roberta that Charlie's in surgery um, Roberta says something. He really liked you, and mm-hmm. then Judd says he likes me. So I, I, he's thought, not dead. I thought that was one of the best lines in the show. For some reason, I thought that played really well because you know the wife is, is thinking that you know it, all is lost with her husband. Her husband is about to die and everything. You know, um, you know she's she's thinking that he's not doing well, and then Judd comforts her. You know, mm-hmm. by by just that one line, and that's basically what I'm talking about: the audience not being handheld, you know, to figure things out. So, you know, Judd tells her he liked he likes me, you know, yeah. as if to say that your husband is not dead yet. So, right. you know, don't count everything out. You know, um, he he still may pull through this, you know, um, um, great and everything. So, still hold out hope and everything that he's going to be okay. One of the things. Yeah, this is this is great, and this is something that's like Lost. And it's there's a lot of open doors in the pilot. Yes, uh, a lot of things where you could see them filling in the gaps, or you know maybe we just take it as it comes. You know, right. the the Charlie being alive seems to me to matter because I assumed he was dead. Right, I'm sure you did. Yep. Right. Yep. R- Roberta's assuming he's dead. Yep. He's not dead. <laughs> he's not dead. Right. So so that's this there's some sort of subversion. There's some I feel like there's something going on. Hopefully they'll get into it. I don't know what it is yet, but it right. seems like there's something hin- hinky is right. the word. Uh, hinky. <laughs> hinky. 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 With an H. <laughs> hinky. The Pittsburgh East. I'm Steel City Hitch. That's what you get with me. Um, <laughs> all right. Now let's talk about the, the character introduction that was excellent. It okay. did a lot of world building. Mm-hmm. Um, it introduced a character who's going to be very important lead character for the show, and that is uh, Angela Abar. Yes. Or... Sister Knight is sister her Knight. is her. So when he was saying Red or Knight, he meant uh-huh. Sister Knight. He means her. Right. Or Regina King, uh, who you know before. I mean, one episode in, I'm 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 loving her performance. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I, she, I, she she was great in the I leftovers. You know, she's great in almost everything that she does and everything. Mm-hmm. So um, she was in uh, another. She was in the leftovers, which which was another of Damon Lindelof's creator of this show and the leftovers. You know, in that show and everything, fantastic performance in that show. So you guys go check that out. Oh yeah, absolutely. She's excellent in everything she does. And you know, we start out. We introduced to her alter ego first. Mm-hmm. We're introduced to Angela first. Angela is a baker, and she's at career day for her son. Yep. Um, and she teaches them how to separate egg egg whites <laughs> for some reason. We get it right into segregation, and she's talking about a. Mar- <laughs> and we do. <laughs> We watch a lot of British baking show in this house, so I know what she's go. talking about is a meringue and a custard, <laughs> and you separate out the egg yolks out to make the meringue. Okay. And she describes how that works. Um, she explains her backstory, which is that she was born in Vietnam before it became a state. Uh-huh. She was a police officer there and then mm-hmm. transferred to Tulsa, mm-hmm. and now she she was shot during the white night. She goes into too much detail for the kids. <laughs> she 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 <laughs> goes into a, she goes into a lot of detail right right before you get to the next thing. So yeah. she was born. Um, before Vietnam became a state, so she was, so so that ev- so so that event occurred right after Doctor Manhattan, um, and you know the the U.S. and everything, um, defeat you know um won Vietnam, right? I think Vietnam became a state around the time of the Keenex, okay? Because I remember when the comedian was shooting those, was you know 
trying to crack down. At least in the movie, there was a there was a Vietnam the fifty first state sign, uh-huh. but I could be misremembering something I'm seeing. The dates could be off. Okay. Um, Regina King herself, I think, was born in nineteen seventy five. Uh-huh. So if we're to use that as a template, probably around then, right? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Here's a question for you, and this is a big question, and, and, and it's something that I think maybe the whole show will answer later. How much of this sounds like uh, it's real? Like, how much of this backstory do you buy? A lot of it sounds real. I, I wonder myself uh, for a couple reasons how much of this is just contrived. Because, you know, if the bakery is fake, who's to say the rest isn't? And if well, they're trying well, to keep well, her identity a secret, I mean, some a uh, contrivance is just as useful as real. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and we'll get to um, the whole bakery thing because there's a couple things about that, you know, the bakery, and she, she, she makes it as if she's actually operating it right now. But as we'll see in a couple scenes from now, or probably I think, yeah, a couple scenes from now, the bakery is yet to be open. Right, and I, the reason I think this could be, you know, and this could just be me misreading. She doesn't seem to be culturally Vietnamese very much no she doesn't she says that she calls them moon 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 cakes moon, moon cakes yeah moon, moon cakes yeah moon cakes <laughs> but that's but she doesn't like pronounce them with she doesn't sound like she grew up culturally vietnamese is the way i'll put it right okay, okay. it seems like there could be a, something something a little off with it but i, I it's not like it's not believable or something yeah like that, yeah right? it's, it's yeah. speculation is is, is it may it, what you know why does she have you know we're we're a kiss because it's obvious it's obviously um you know, the kid is not the same color as her, you know. Um, so or before we get to, like, you know, future scenes and everything, um, mm-hmm. you know, we just see that that's a whole different dynamic right in itself right there. Now, how about um, some of the things that we've seen on the walls in the classroom? You know, oh, we, my goodness. <laughs> we, we seen we seen that Robert Redford and um, Richard Nixon was one of the most important presidents, you know, but we don't Robert see many Redford's presidents. Been president since Robert Redford got elected president instead of Bill Clinton. <laughs> like that's uh, just to put that into perspective, how long it's been. He won in '92, so he's been president for 28 years, right? Um, at this point, so he's a very important president, and he's also, and this is something that is in the PDpedia, but he's someone that was personally picked by Adrian Veet <laughs> to be the president, all financed by Adrian, right? Uh, Adrian. So, so Redford's very again. important. We also hear Redfordations, which oh, apparently yeah. is a. One of those terms the New York Times will call racially charged, right? right? right. Red fredations. So we'll find out more about that. Mm-hmm. No, more yeah, more the, information necessary before I can even say what that is. What yeah, it's referring yeah. To. Well, well, uh, it's the, the the kid is alluding to uh, um, the the um, Angela opened up a bakery and she's she's talking about how success, you know successful it was and everything. Um, and the kid asks her if red fredations pay you know pay for it. And Angela gets a little peeved with the question. And then we see the kid attack, um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so we see a kid attack the boy and everything. And then we find out, you know, in the next scene, that's her son. Yeah. Topher. 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 With Not my favorite nose. way to do Christopher, but hey, typical <laughs> people pick it. self-identification, right? It's not right? my business. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they're in the car. And, uh, you know, uh, Angela's given her son a little lecture about why it's bad to punch people, even if they're racist or kind of proto-racist. Right. Uh, and then there's a tornado alarm. she feels the same which, way. And, but she, even though she feels the same way. <laughs> you can't do that. No, it's inappropriate for you to use violence outside right, of the law. Right, 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 right. Right, that's the whole thing. But he's just kind of like, oh, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> then we get a tor- and, and then we get a siren. Now, the siren in Tulsa... You know, it's a tornado siren. Right. They're pretty. They're pretty common. Um, my mom lives in Oklahoma City, so I'm familiar ah, okay. with sort of some of stuff. Okay. Okay. So just to answer any questions that have what what that was. Right. A tornado siren. However, uh-huh. Sam, there was mm-hmm. no tornado. There was no tornado. Mm-hmm. What was falling out the skies, you guys, were squids. We got squids, people. Squids. Squid. Squids! So many squids. I thought maybe one squid would be enough squids for me. Uh, right? Hey, hey, one, one big squid should have just, you know, just handled it all, but apparently we get a <laughs> bunch of squids now. <laughs> Woo! They got a deal. We're raining they squids. Got a deal. So, these, so these squids will rain and they'll smack off your car oh, and they man. stink. Oh, man. And yeah. you can wipe them off, but they eventually evaporate into water. You spray them off, you wipe, yeah. you know, they just go away. So they're water soluble squids. Just like sea <laughs> Water soluble squids. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a water common thing. Squid. It's it's just a common thing there. You know, you get out your car, wipe them off, and go about your day. No, that's biggie. just what it is. Just pull over, pull over. It's gonna be a squid rain today. Whew. A squid rain. Yeah. 
man. Squid Rain. It's, it's, right, it's, so. it's, it's amazing what happened 30 years from when the squid, the, 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 the dimensional incursion event, people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. the squid incident from New York happened, you know, and it's mm-hmm. affected the, apparently the entire world, country, or what have you. I mean, it's affected everything. Yeah. It's everybody's daily life. It's like a reminder, like, oh, squids. Yeah. Like you're just trying yeah. to you're just trying to go home from school and it's like, hey. For 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 those who have watched the Watchmen movie and are confused by this whole squid thing, the um the Watchmen movie deviated from the original ending of what the comic book um ending of um in ending was. You know, some people liked, mm-hmm. you know, the movie ending, some people didn't like the the combo ending. The the lore from this universe is taking everything that happened in Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons and John Higgins comic book um, graphic novel and making it canon for this. So that's the reason why we got squids here. Yeah. And there's squids abound. <clears throat> They're all over the place. So all over the place. So grab your umbrella. The squids that Yeah, the main event in eighty five was the squid. Dropped the squid in New York instead of Dr. Manhattan blackmailing the world, which was unnecessary because he was already Dr. Manhattan. So there is a beep. Mm-hmm. Angela's husband Cal. Mm-hmm who her her children refer to as daddy right yep um so definitely one one family that's what i'm taking that information to see not not a blend right so he says you've got a little big you've got a little page you've been getting it all day a little big horn a little big horn uh yeah (laughs) little big horn just for uh, anyone that is not aware is the battle at which uh george custer was wiped out by a superior force of uh native americans Uh uh-huh that is what that means. It means apparently Officer Down. And Officer Down is a big deal. Yes, very big And deal. what we see after she gets that, and she says, I have to go to the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go I to the bakery. I have to go to... Yeah. <laughs> she should be saying... If she, if she was a comic book, she'd be saying, like, time to make the donuts. Oh, Making man. A face like that. And, and, and what did Alan Moore and them explore um, in, the, in the books? How, you know, this uh, stuff like this, is, you know, re- relates to, to, to the tropes of superheroes. You know, Batman right, right, has right. to go to the cave. You know, Batman and Robin, you know, yeah. when they get the call from Commissioner Gordon or whatever, the bat signal, they got to go to their perspective um, um, lair in order to, yeah. you know, change. And what do we get? <laughs> We get this awesome montage, right? So, uh, the montage of her. Well, oh, first she goes in. Well, well, to, well back up before when she that, gets to the bakery, right? Well, let's talk about. Let, let's yeah. talk about the 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 things we see walking across walking across the street. We get a bus going mm-hmm. by with a uh, advertisement of American Hero Story. Um, yep, we see about the minimum. We see, um, man, why am I can't think of um, the big guy? We get the hood, hooded justice. Hooded Justice. <laughs> we get Hooded Justice right on a bus, people. <laughs> right on a bus, you know, going by and everything. You know, he's part of a show called American Hero Story, you know, as a parallel from, like, I guess our American Horror Story or American Crime Story or whatever. You know, it's, it's their version of those type of shows in, in, in this universe, you know. Um, and then, you know, she continues to walk across the street. We get a montage. We get, like, a, you know, um, scroll of... You know, a um, whole mural of, um, um, you know, different stuff on the wall there. And then we also see um, a guy holding uh, a sign call uh, that says the future is bright. Yeah. So that parallel. Things are all right. Yeah, that things are okay. Things are all right. But that parallels goes back to what we've seen in the um, very first issue of Watchmen. You know, the original graphic mm-hmm. novel of, of Walter Kovacs. You know, the guy in the red hair walking across the, the blood saying the end is nigh. So the future is bright here. The end, end is nigh was there back then and everything. So that was a great callback and just, uh, you know, parallel from, you know, what happened 30 something years ago in this universe. And that was before uh, Angela gets to her lair. You know, then, then we it's just see, random. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just, just, they just, just decided, random. They just jammed this thing full. It's why we took an extra day because it's just so much. It's, it's, it's just, so much to unwind. So, so, so much to unwind. And then we see um, uh, old the old guy, uh, old guy talking to Angela just before she gets into um, her bakery um, and asks her a question. 
<laughs> she, he asked, like, do you think I could lift? <laughs> do you think I could? Pounds. Do you think I could lift two hundred pounds? <laughs> mm-hmm. And she just looks at him like, oh man, come on, yeah, yeah, you could lift two hundred pounds. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And then she proceeds uh, into her lair. And inside the lair, um, the bakery, we see a montage of her sort of suiting up yes. and gearing up. Yes. And she's classic you know, comic book, you know, montage. <laughs> and then we cut to her getting in her car. Yeah. She drives directly to a, a trailer park that has, is just decked out in Richard Nixon memorabilia. Wait, wait, how cool was that car? That reminded me of um the Green Hornet. That's a cool. Uh, that car was awesome. That's all awesome black, car. all you know, all all tinted windows and everything. Oh man, she had a great Batmobile there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, 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 really hey, excellent. Sister Knight has her Batman tendencies, huh? She does, huh? She does. She's huh? got that whole gear up scene. She's got the Batman car. She really likes hitting people, and yes. that's like Batman, maybe. That's, Batman's that's, favorite hey, thing. That's but she uses guns, not a Batman tendency, right? So she's right. different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if we're, we're t- we have a thing called Batman tendencies about you know superheroes yeah. and um their tropes, you know, and what um a lot of superheroes um are based on is is some things that a lot you know a lot of things Batman does, you know, mm-hmm. and we tend to use that term a lot here on um Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen a lot when it become you know when it comes to you know, heroes in um, just superheroes, period. Costume heroes, period. Yeah. Batman tendencies, you know, things you do. <laughs> things you do when you're a Batman, right? Um, like This montage Have is cool extremely car. effective, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, right? So this montage is so effective. Yeah. Because it establishes her direction. It establishes what's different about her in this mode. Yeah. It establishes that all the stuff that she said in that school was baloney right. and designed to cover this. Yes. It establishes that she's tied in with the police and the fact that she drives right up to this right up to this trailer park, kicks the door in, beats the guy up and throws him in the car before we see her face. And we see her face when she turns around in the elevator after seeing the direction, the power and being like, I, you should be afraid of her. Right. You should right, definitely right, be afraid right, of this right, person. Right. Def- she's definitely, scary. <laughs> definitely be concerned. But how about the, the, the nine hand holding again of. What, mm-hmm. what the, the the montage of everything that happens. We don't see her put him in a trunk. We see her kick right. the door down, come in there and punch the guy, you know, these quick flash scenes and everything. Next thing you know, she's at the police station, um, you know, driving you know, driving under the um you know, the parking lot or whatever, into the police mm-hmm. station, and then um, you know, we see her walking into the the um the police you know, the the the, the um the, the video thing that we're about to see in the next scene here. This video. So, Sister Knight goes into what looks like a general police conference room, except right. made to be a little Assembly. bit more. It seems like the tribunal. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I right? would call that the tribunal. Uh, pretty nifty. So they, uh, she walks in there in the middle of playing a like a terrorist credit video. Like right. we did this. That's right. kind of the gist. And um, it's a guy in a Rorschach mask says, we're the 7th Cavalry. They spell it with a K, which mm-hmm. is the racist way to spell Cavalry, if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> and, just swap out the C and, with a K. <laughs> yeah, just, it, makes it, it makes it like 10% more racist anytime you throw a K. It's, unless it's Mortal Kombat, that makes it just combat. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. That's okay. Yeah. And, they're, and they're spotting off um, um, terminology, the, the um, quotes from Rorschach's journal. You know, what was yeah. the big line from the movie, you know, that he does, you know, say in a... In a um, when their filth and their filth will accumulate in the gutters and come around their waist and they will ask me to save them and I'll say, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> but there was a lot of that, right? That Saying, shit. like, whores. And uh, we'll whisper no and we won't save you. We're the 7th oh, Cavalry. So yeah. it's, it's like they've sort of subsumed, like, assumed... Yeah, some they, of the... they, they, they took a lot of his stuff literally, I guess. So, you know, to say the so, least and everything. So. <laughs> so these guys seem to be a pretty a pretty good faceless evil. Well, we I mean, they're, they're Rorschach faceless fans. People. They're, they're Rorschach right. fanboys, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, you know. <laughs> fans of Rorschach. They're called the Pacific Cavalry. <laughs> There are certain people that may read Watchmen and think that it is a glorification of the characters in Watchmen that may think 
some of these things that should consider rereading the material or rethinking their, <laughs> their conclusions well, about uh, the material. Going, going, going back to the PDPedia, um, we find out why they are and the reasons why they are wearing those masks and where how that origin came to be. I don't know how much of that they're going to reveal in the show, but everything that you see in the Pediapedia is canon for the show, so it makes a really yeah. great read as the reasons. From HBO. Yeah, as the reasons. And a lot of people um, I, I read on the internet were kind of put off by, you know, this and everything, but when you read the reasons behind this, um, it makes a lot of sense in the way um, his history and historical um facts well i'm sorry not historical facts historical documents are assimilated and assume that um you know what what a person said back then is a uh if if you're taking it on in a present day context you're 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 pretty much in a, a realm you're you're pretty much in a um place where you were looking for a reason to do some of the things that you're doing you know so yeah. you t if it wasn't rorschach it was going to be something else that caused them to you know, be the way that they are, you know, you know, back then. So they took his conspiracies um, mm -hmm. and basically made a whole movement out of it and everything, thinking that yep. that's what he um, that that's what he wanted. As we are the graphic novel readers know about Rorschach, Rorschach may have been like a um, he may have been crazy, <laughs> but Rorschach. No, there's the, no look. There, take no, the no, may there, out there, of that. There, no he was ifs, ands, or buts. Rorschach. Well, he was crazy. Rorschach was a pursuer of the truth. All he wanted to do was have the truth revealed. That's all he wanted. You know, he had his judgments on people, but he wasn't, you know, to the point of where, um, um, you know, he, he was about to, to, to take out certain folks. He, all, uh, he, he just wanted to be a pursuer of the truth. And this seventh Calvary is taking those, con you know, those, those, those journals and I guess making their their pursuit of their truth, um, you know, I guess apparent in this universe. Yep. Um, it's it's an interesting inversion because once again, they feel like the United States they government is perpetrating a hoax, and they're right about that particular thing. Yes, they were. So it's an interesting dichotomy. You know, there's a there's an onion uh, a tweet that's an onion article. Yeah. And uh, it makes rounds every so often, and it's uh, the worst person you know just made a really good point. And it makes me laugh. It's what I think about when I think about like, uh, like things like this, right? The very worst. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And and you tell, and it was totally dismissed, and you totally dismiss them because you already have a bias in your, you know, what they call like, un, you know, confirmed biases and everything. You already have confirmation a way, bias. confirmation biases and everything. You already have a, a way of of the way you're thinking in your head. So you're not going to listen to anything else beyond what you, what you, what you may feel or think or whatever. You know, unfortunately, a lot of people. Um, aren't able to communicate that and aren't able to open up their minds to earn other ideas and opinions and everything. So everything is a confirmed bias, you know, for them. You know, okay, so this happened. You know, well, yep. it actually confirms my beliefs and everything. Although I have no proof. I didn't go out to research anything. It just basically, um, I, I'm just basically um, making this opinion and assumption based on things that I see, you know, or, based, or, based, or things that I've heard. When you think about it, this... These guys are conspiracy theorists. Yes. It's pretty much who they are. And in our in our world, <laughs> there are conspiracy theorists about things like the Kennedy assassination. Yes. And 9-11. Right. And these events, I mean, they're real. Like loose change is a thing that exists in the world. It is. I mean, it's not it's not this isn't a whole fabrication, so right. you know, the idea of a minority report, which is essentially what this is, is yes. a minority report yes. saying right. the Dimensional incursion event <laughs> was DIE. The DIE, where's the evidence? Where's all this? Like, they're, they're, it, it's, it's so interesting because we see those people mm -hmm. doing the same thing in our reality, and they, they do tend to tack toward a certain way. Yeah. In a similar way to the seventh cab. Yeah. So, um, Judd comes in at the end of this, at the end of the video, says yeah. it's been three years. So, we know how long it's been since the war's ended. Uh -huh. Three years. Mm -hmm. And, he says, you know, we're Article 4, which means we're going to release all the guns. And then Panda makes them go through the pantomime panda, where they vote. Panda, <laughs> panda, panda, panda. So, so, so cut back to, um, flashback to the beginning of the episode where the guy was mm -hmm. trying to, uh, you know, the cop was trying to get the gun release. And, you know, he asked, 
if um you know uh, he asks if someone is around to release the gun and then the, the lady on the other end says well panda's there and he's like well is there anybody else other than panda <laughs> <laughs> panda apparently gives everyone a hard time because you know um the article four um basically gets them to you know release the guns and everything but panda um he i, I guess he's the gatekeeper you know, he makes people think about this before. But he makes sure they're just really, really sure about this before it actually happens. Because apparently, guess, you know. Okay. My guess is that he's statutory required to be there. And the fact that he's masked and only referred to by his masked name means no one's allowed to know who he is. Ah, okay. Which is like, uh, like an, a whistleblower protection kind of. Right, right. So he says, we're going to do things by the book. And you can't, like, intimidate me to make me not do them by the book. Right. Right. Because you don't know right. who I am. He's kind right. of like an HR so that seems like what of, it is. Um, regulator or whatever. You know, he gave such, he yeah. gave the cop at the beginning such a hard time making sure that, you know, it was high priority. You know, were you at the risk? Were, are you going through the list of things in order to get this gun released? Because you can't just get the gun out and do what you want to do. You know, right. um, you know, Panda is there, like you said, to uh, make sure everything is on the level before that gun mm -hmm. is being released. So my guess is that either there's always a Panda Mm -hmm. Or there's always somebody who just has a mask and does those things. And he seems like there's a subgroup. It seems like there's the, the, the legit right. uniform patrol cops. Right. And they all wear the, the mask like this. Right. But then there's the special cops, like the detectives, the major crimes unit, the homicide unit. Right. They all seem to be like right. Sister Knight and Red Scare, who's the dude in the red mask. He's Sylvia, right? right? Yeah. And uh, Looking Glass and Pirate Jenny. You know, they're all kind of uh you know. and everything um it'll be yeah. interesting to see you know if this see this goes on like for more, you know, more than a few seasons if they go into other areas of the country and how they're dealing with the after effects and aftermath of everything that happened with the squid is and how the, the world is so we're just seeing what happens in tulsa you know are right. other cops in other places like new york or cleveland or pittsburgh or whatever are they in um um, or they were in mask as well, or, you know, um, yeah. how's their police force like, or, or how are they reacting if Tulsa is, is, is doing this because of what happened with the white knight when, when um, right. you know, what, um, Angela referred to back in the, um, school, um, how are they react, reacting to cops wearing masks, you know, just, just how do other people react to other people in this universe? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, after this scene where, you know, they do, they say weapons live, they all go, they go live on the weapons. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, Judd and Angela meet in Judd's office. Mm -hmm. Angela's sitting in Judd's chair. <laughs> and on the desk, there's a copy of the tell all book under the hood by Night Owl uh -huh, one, Hollis uh -huh, Mason, uh -huh. which was a nice little callback. Yes, yes, yes. And, and Angela tells Judd, I got a dude in my trunk. I figured you'd tell us to go round up the usuals and bring them in, so I rounded a usual up and brought them in. <laughs> she's on it before everyone else is, so she she, she cuts on a little chitter chatter. Action. Yeah, oh, she yeah, she's a person of action. Great way, she's a woman of action. <laughs> I, I want to say it like this because you know I, I really don't want it to act to see, I don't want to keep like talking down on Malin Ackerman's performance of yeah. of um you know as Lori and in why? the movie. Right. But when I say I want someone kinetic and someone driven and someone who's headstrong, I mean stuff like picking the dude up then being like, yeah, you said you were gonna tell me to pick him up. Like that sort of thing, right? Yeah. That says so much about her character and it's so you know, again, she's very formidable. This is a formidable person. Well, we well, should know it, that it, right it, away it, we do. Well it, it, you know, basically a female in the Watchmen universe, you know, is mm -hmm. um Basically, what we talked about in a previous podcast about Lori and how she was depicted in the book, you know, about how, um, you know, strong she was in the book versus how she was depicted in the movie, which did, a, did, did her a really disservice, you know, with and Madeline Ackerman, she's a great actress and everything. But unfortunately, she wasn't given the right material uh, or the right direction to portray, you know, Lori in a really good aspect. So go read the um, books. You'll find Lori is a, uh, a very strong character. Um, especially by the you know time you get to the end of the series, and it really you know draws on to what we see here with Sister Knight and everything. Um, you know the way that imagine she's putting afraid. Sister imagine putting Sister Knight in like a damsel in distress situation, right? Versus <sighs> That's not putting <laughs> Lori, but yeah, versus putting Lori Giuseppe from the movie in a in a damsel in distress situation, right? Right. Like you'd be like you'd be like, oh, they're coming to rescue it. They're coming to rescue Angela, but 
who really cares? Like, she, <laughs> she's going to bust out of this and kill everybody. <laughs> like, these people are all locked in this room with her. Like, yeah. they don't realize yeah, that. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. So that, that's something I just wanted to, to call out and highlight that, as we see it. Because it's... What, what, what did Rorschach say in the prison? You're all here locked in with me. Yeah. <laughs> You know we're locked in with me. And I, some, someone in that prison was like, "He's right, man. I'm, oh, I'm staying yeah, away. Pretty, I'm staying away. Pretty, pretty, I'm just gonna stay much, in my pretty, cell. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna read Grapes of Wrath. I'm gonna hang out. <laughs> Can't do anything crazy. So it works. <laughs> uh, so Looking Glass yeah. runs an interrogation from the dude they picked up at the trailer park in something called the Pod. The Pod. And this <laughs> this scene <laughs> is so neat. Yeah. So the Pod is a room that's video screens all over right and i'm thinking that the music they play sounded like in media right that's the music yeah. the pods playing the music right because right. it's also more really good tracks from trent reznor by yeah, the way and Atticus Atticus Finch. Atticus Finch. the soundtrack yeah. was incredible i mean i would call this incredible. at the end but it's incredible. 10 out of 10 amazing yeah incredible. kinetic driven Intense. synth yeah it feels yeah. like something it feels like something they pulled out of 1985 which is the right way to boot an illusion to a mm-hmm. time period right mm-hmm. not dress mm-hmm. people up in uh, facial prosthetics <laughs> so the interrogation here's some of the questions right and there are images that flash behind him of like american gothic and you know the clan and the confederate well, flag he, and all he, these he starts off soft and these. then and then it, gradually he gets into um more intense questions well some of these questions are <clears throat> are trans-dimensional attacks uh hoaxes perpetrated by the u.s government <laughs> and should all americans pay taxes you say yes, and then, and then more than once. Uh huh. Are you a member of, or do you associate with any members of the white supremacist organization known as the Seventh Cavalry? And he says it like four, like five times, like right, that, right? Right, right. Alternating questions. This is like, right, alternating between this and other questions, and the, the camera zooms in on the guy's eyeball right. and like shows you this like poker tells, which I think is what Looking Glass is good at seeing. Right. And he comes out and says he knows, but he ain't gonna say nothing without motivation. <laughs> And then uh, Sister Knight says, oh, we get it. We get carried away. And then she beats the dude senseless and says, there, there, they're at the cattle ranch. Yep, yeah. Because oh, they know and, where and, all the and, 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 and then we get a great scene of when, when she takes her into a you know the room and, you know, gets the cattle ranch information out of her. You know, we see um, blood coming and water coming from the um, bottom of the door, which is a great callback to Rorschach beating up, um, beating up, um, Little, let's say, say, big figure, big figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's big, big figure. figure. Hey, Rorschach, don't beat me up. <laughs> when when he took him into the bathroom, and then all we see is just ah, you know, blood you, coming out. I can pay you. <laughs> yeah. Again, oh, for me, man. listen. If you didn't listen, if you didn't watch our listen to or watch our other stuff, I, I think Big Figure should have a funny voice like that because he's a Batman sixty six villain running into a, the Dark Knight Batman. Except he'll kill him. <laughs> Like he just like it's future shock for him, right? He has no right. idea. Right. He's just like, oh, I'm gonna tie Rorschach up and leave him somewhere. <laughs> like, nope, that's not a good idea. Don't do that. He's gonna. And then like by the time you say it, you finish that sentence, all his henchmen are dead, and he's just sort of away. Oh man, that was crazy, right, crazy, so. crazy, crazy. But the great um, interrogation, yeah, super interesting. Shows you <laughs> who Looking Glass is, what he does, right? Mm-hmm. You know now what Looking Glass does. We uh-huh. know what Sister Knight does. Yes. Um, Red Scare. We haven't seen it yet, but the next scene mm-hmm. is the assault on the cattle ranch. Uh-huh. And we see Red Scare in his element here, which is like Super Commando, right? Yep. A comedian-esque, you know, probably ex-Spetsnaz, you know, right. Soviet, right. or maybe just Russian. Who knows? Who knows how much of any of this is a put on? I, I really... Yeah, it's, I don't know. it's still, it's still. I mean, first episode, a lot of it's still, you know, up in the air. So the alarm goes off. Um, you know, we we are at the cattle ranch. Alarm goes off, and um, we see them putting coins in a bowl. Um, They're batteries. Batteries. Okay, your batteries. Watch batteries. Oh, what, what, okay, watch They're, batteries. And they they talk about this at the end of the at the very end of the, okay, like right before okay, the end okay. of the show. I was trying to it's, figure it's, out what that batteries. was. So yeah, yeah, watch batteries. They're old watch batteries made with lithium ion. They're lithium ion batteries made in the late 70s, early 80s, based mm-hmm. on technology created by Dr. Manhattan. If you'll remember, he said electric cars were not uh, possible until because there wasn't enough lithium, but I can right. just make a bunch of lithium. Okay. Um, so they say they're pre, they're Manhattan quality. So Dr. Manhattan made these things. Okay. And that's something that's probably going to be important later, but not, you know, that's what they're doing. They're collecting these watch batteries. Right. right. And there also- is a. Yes. They're also each handed a pill. Yes. So so the lights go on. There's an alarm. They know the cops are here. The jig is up. Everyone gets handed <laughs> a pill. 
they bundle all the batteries into duffel bags. They split up one group to defend, one group to run away. Mm-hmm. So they've set up this anti-aircraft like truck mounted machine gun that's got 300 300 it looks like 300 round belts oh, man. and Craziness. they just murder all these cows these poor cows are just chilling i and mean they just shoot you, all these you, cows. You, you think about you know the, the the animal folks and everything they're just like what the heck is this it does seem like you know some crazy unnecessary craziness but the sacrificial lambs sacrificial cows <laughs> yep <laughs> sacrificial cows so <laughs> I sacrifice bulls in rooms. All right. Uh, so one of the coolest. So this scene's really cool. Great mm-hmm. firefight. Uh, you know, great to watch. Um, you know, uh, Red Scare pops some smoke, and then during a reload, uh, Sister Knight runs up, shoots the one guy, and uh, chases the other, the guy operating the machine gun back into the mobile home uh-huh. where they were separating uh, the watch batteries. There's a fight, a physical altercation, which she gets the upper hand in, but the remainder, who is the shooter from earlier. Yeah, takes a pill. Real, takes a pill, swallows it. She says, spit it out, damn it, just like Ozymandias says. Just in, like uh, Adrian did. Yep, yep, yep. In his, in his and tower. He's, but he's gone. <laughs> uh, and then we have... Um... Wait, what did, she look at, <laughs> what did she look at on the wall? Oh! So this is why we watch these things more than once. Because the first time through this, there's a dollar bill bank, like a bank sign. Because dollar bill is a private superhero sign hired by a bank like United National Bank or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's a dollar bill sign on the wall. And the first time we watched it, I was like, oh, dollar bill. Yep. The second time we watched it, I could tell that that dollar bill sign is extremely racist. Extremely racist. <laughs> extremely racist. Very racist. So, so, so watch it again. You'll see like, um, just, so he's holding, just... he's holding like the, the bank robber yeah. by the, like this, like, oh man, it's, it's just craziness. And everything. So, very racist. They're, they're very proud they're, of that so, in there. <laughs> Yeah, so Sister Knight takes a moment to regard that. Right. And then uh, we are treated to an airplane fight. Uh, two of the seventh cav guys got in an airplane. The uh, We find out Judd has been in an Overwatch position in an Arky, and he basically shoots down the uh, seventh cav, although it causes Arky to crash. Hmm. So the, it was so, uh, great, Ar- it was so great to see Arky, man, you know, um, or a version of Arky. So what do you think? Do you think that um, the police... Being that we don't know where Dan Dryberg is at this point, but if you read some of the Pediapedia stuff, you may know, you know. <laughs> so, 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 do you think they took some of this technology and now they have different archies like all over there, like the U.S. now? I mean, I think that when you look at the markings of the ship, it's a police car, pretty okay, much. Okay, okay. So, probably pretty common, although <clears throat> how many of these there are is an open question, or whether you have to sign them out or whatever. Right. Um, I think there's a mix of old switches mm-hmm. that you flip like flippy switches right. and buttons right. and then there's some newer overlay that looks more modern like i think the one the ui interface on the screens on the mm-hmm. windows i think looks more modern mm-hmm. so it looks like it's an upgraded version of his original tech okay. is my my bit okay um we get the 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 press down on the flamethrower button <laughs> that works yeah uh, yeah yeah, so you know callback. we're definitely <laughs> meant to meant to associate this with dan driver right and um, this will be revealed in the future, you know. Um, Dan Driver was original. Um, the second Night Owl, you know, from Night the Owl original two. Night Owl two from the Watchmen on graphic novel. So that's who we're referring to. The Night Owl you see in the cool costume or the different right. costume. Mm-hmm. So that's Dan Driver, and we don't really know where he is yet in the show. Uh, the PDPD has info on that. I'm assuming they'll release it later in the show. Maybe we'll see him. Who knows? He's alive. That's what I'll say here. Okay. Um, and then after this crash, and so Judd, cra- the, you know, Judd and, and, and Pirate Jenny crash the owl ship and they get out and they all have a good laugh at, you know, how they managed to survive this close shave. Right. Right. Pretty much what the laugh's about. And then um, this is, I think, where it cuts over to Adrian because it, it the pans up into the stars and then pans down into the beach and we see Adrian riding a horse somewhere yeah, and like what we can assume is he- thing and, you know, he's riding a horse um, and then it's. Oh, sorry, it's playing. Right, right, right. Well, we see a whole so castle, leave. you know, in the back yeah. and everything. He's he's going, and then you know, a servant helps him off the horse. He's now, and then we see him in a um, we see him start naked, <laughs> yeah, in front of a um a, a typewriter, and and the nudity, crazy... <laughs> nudity and Watchmen's an interesting thing, right? It's yeah. a super interesting kind of yeah situation yeah. because Doctor Manhattan is very famously drawn heroically nude and 
everything, right? He's always heroically new. Exactly. Um, the the um, so, the, 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 the the scene revealed. Um, it's funny how they they did it because the servant looks as if she's you know going down on him. <laughs> and yeah. She, and she comes up, you know, and tells him that um, and asks him uh, or notices that his thighs are very tender or whatever. They're raw. Raw. Your thighs raw. are raw. Well, mm -hmm. I've been riding all day, Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> I took my horse down to the old town road, Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> to the old town road. <laughs> I rode it till I couldn't ride anymore. <laughs> Why are half of Adrian and Slayer just horses on, on my road? back? <laughs> it seemed like quite a gamble. It seemed like a gamble to make it, to make it all be uh, just an old town road. Like you could say things aren't an old town road, you know. Right. I so <laughs> then the gist of this so adrian adrian's missing we know adrian's yeah. been declared dead right because that's that's something that showed up on the ground like somewhere adrian's dead Adrian, so he's he been declared dead he's when 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 angela was going to the bakery we saw like a, yes. a paper with um the age of confirmed article adrian is dead and that's another article that you see in the pdpedia guys so make sure you keep checking it out because it hey, has hey. a whole article of 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 that article that you've seen that flash in the episode when we say things like they open a door to somewhere, the room is that article. Oh, so go check, man, go walk man. in the room. Great, great, got, great, got great, see great information. Great filler. Yeah. So, um, so check that out. So, so, uh, so Jeremy Irons plays Adrian B. And <laughs> this is excellent casting, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he's such a talented actor, and he's been good in so many things that he has, brings a media cachet right. uh, to the role. He looks like you know, he looks like he could be a good-looking old man. I think, and that's. <laughs> That to me is something that I think we need here. I want to. I, I mock something up. This is stupid. Okay. I mean, but we're a video podcast. So I'll show it. I took an old picture of Jeremy Irons and then sloppily put a purple mask on it just to see what he would have looked like. Talk to Mandy. So here's here we go. So I made this myself. It is awful, but it's it's also that's what I think he'd look like. That is also, funny. and this is just information. If if you don't want to be horny, don't go looking for old pictures of Jeremy Irons. Don't do. <laughs> Very good Scotty! Movie. Oh man! All right, so he, so the gist of this scene is, uh, Jeremy Irons. You know, I'm sorry. We'll just gotta call him Adrian. Adrian's at home, right? And he rides a horse. He types some stuff out on a typewriter. He has a meal with a cake. He has servants that call him master. Oh man! Yep. Their names are Alphonse, and... Mrs. Crookshanks. And Mr. Mr. Phillips. Phillips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he addresses them all that way. They all call him master. They all seem to be very devoted to him. Very devoted. Um, at but, dinner. But, but, but the guy is declared dead. So mm -hmm. do these servants live with him? You know, do they have families that they go back to? Something weird's going on. Something strange going on. For anybody to just This is a great departure master. from everything that we've seen previously in this episode. So this is just a whole, like, you know, 180. Like, what the hell is going on here? And why are we every in single, with this guy? Every time we're encountered with something, we're meant to think there's an official story, like the dimensional incursion event. <laughs> right. And then the real story. Right. Like Adrian's plot. So here, Adrian's dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's really alive and there's something weird going on. Mm -hmm. Or Angela's a baker. Mm-hmm. She's really sister night and she beats a lot of people yeah, up for hey, fun. You know, two sides. So so there's this there's this there's always a little like another layer to all of this, which is right. which is so interesting. Yeah. Um they tell they tell Adrian that it's his anniversary, anniversary. which would have been his anniversary of something. If we're to understand the cuts here, this is uh it's nine nine or nine ten mm -hmm. uh nine twenty nineteen. So something happened in September at some point. Right. Um they make him a cake. Mm -hmm. They made him a cake with the honeycomb he gave them, <laughs> he takes a bite of it and says, it's the bee's knees, but doesn't look like it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's being nice. Right, so he says, it's the bee's knees, it's really good. Well, hold on, and hold then, on. What the, the, the servant, first of all, asks him um, if he could cut the, um, if, if he would oh, like oh, to yeah. cut the, 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 the um, cake with the horseshoe. Would you like to cut the cake, sir? That's a horseshoe. <laughs> He he just looks at us like it's a horseshoe. What do you? He he looks like okay, like he's just like exaggerated or whatever, better. you know. Um, he says, you... "Would a knife be better?" <laughs> yes. He cuts it with a fork. Right? And this he's is all weird, this to... guy. So you know, it's it's, it's something a, strange it's going really on. Weird. Here. The outfit he's wearing is very purpley, very much like mm 
Yeah. His Ozymandias outfit in many ways harkens back to that. The, the, the um, cake, the cake then, looks very much like a squid. It did, and it looked like the off. It looked was purple and gold, yeah, right? just like yeah. the Aussie man, like outfit, the but a little more gold than purple. Right. Mm-hmm. So, what happens next? Mister Phillips mm-hmm. presents Adrian with a gift for his anniversary. Right. And that gift is wrapped in what sure looks like rabbit skin. Yeah. Sure, looks like just a rabbit pelt, all sort of bundled up. And then when Adrian opens it, it's a pocket watch. Mm. And he says, I found it in your drawings. It, took, I wanted, it was very intricate and difficult. I put it all together. I wanted to surprise you. And Adrian seems very surprised and yeah, happily very, surprised by Happily this. surprised and shocked <clears throat> in a way, you know, that um, he was able to put that together like that. Incredible. Mm-hmm. And he tells them, I have written. I'm, I'm going to keep doing the Adrian voice because <laughs> I just think it's so bad. I have written a play in five acts. I'm just going to call it The Watchmaker Son. And I want you two to play the lead and everyone gets real excited. Oh, they're 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 just overjoyed, you know. They say, "Oh, you know." So, who's the watchmaker's son, Sam? Oh man, hey, you tell me. You know who the watchmaker's son is. I'm going to tell you right now. Da, da, the da, watchmaker's da, son. Da, 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 is it the guy? Is it the big blue guy? With one jiggle part. With so, one jiggle part. One thing jiggles on him. So, Doctor Manhattan, <laughs> uh, otherwise known as John Osterman, is. Um, a character who is prominently featured in the in the graphic novel as being a watchmaker's son. Yeah. He's learning how to make a watch. His father throws the pieces out and says, you're going to be into nuclear physics. And it's one of the things that John thinks about is the cause of him becoming Dr. Manhattan. Like, what right. was the event that precipitated this? Right. Right. That's where we know all this from. So it is very highly likely that the thing that Adrian's been typing out on his typewriter is this five-act play, which is called The Watchmaker's Son, which is really a play about Dr. Manhattan. So, with the knowledge of what we know about Adrian and his antics and how detailed and clever he is about um, orchestrating things and, um, um, you know, getting stuff done and everything. So, my speculation is that he... Hold on. Why why don't you have a cowboy hat made out of tinfoil to put on? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, for future production, <coughs> man, I hurt to get us at some tinfoil hats. Yeah, yeah. I got pretty. some, I mean, I got a hat I could put some, t- I could do this. Hey, I'm not, hey, I'm going to do it. Let's, let's, let's go at it. Is, is, he drove, he drove Dr. Manhattan away in an original graphic novel. Is yes. this, is there, is this a plot to bring him back to Earth? Is, is whatever he's doing, because he's titled it The Watchmaker's Son. You know, mm-hmm. and we know that um, John Osterman is, you know, was a uh, son of a watchmaker and everything. Is this some type of plot to bring um, Dr. Manhattan back to Earth? My reading mm-hmm. of all of this is that what Adrian might try to do is to make himself into another Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> because oh boy. he's essentially reached the limit of what his physical oil territory needed. here. <laughs> he's 80 years old. Yeah. He's still in amazing shape. Yeah. By the way, I'm not, yeah. I'm going to stop again. I'm going to stop being horny for Jeremy Irons at some point. In the future. <laughs> uh, not yet though. Not yet. Cause not he's still looking age. great for right, being right. 80 years old. Yeah. But Ozzy Mandis is 80. He's 80 years old. Yeah. And okay. he looks very, you know, he's, he's virile. He's still fine, but he's reaching the limits of a physical body. So, you know, what could you, what could he be that would allow him to be more powerful? I mean, the only thing he could be is Dr. Manhattan. He knows how to do it. I mean, he knows it's possible. Mm-hmm. We don't know how many other people have been killed by intrinsic field generating machines or removing mm-hmm. machines, right? right? Could be every other person. Maybe no one's tried it yet. Maybe he's still trying to figure out exactly what happened. Right. And um, basically, are you saying that he's trying to recreate the incident? Yes. Okay. okay. I think that might be what he's trying to do. But, you know, that's speculation. That's speculation. Um, what else did 10-4. I think? What else did I thought mm-hmm. looking at this? extremely weird scene i mean extremely (laughs) these people are all very weird people so there's something wrong with them either cognitively or elsewise um i think they're either experiment subjects that he sent through a machine or something like that either they're clones or robots Robots, or yeah yeah Yeah. i think they're very subservient just inclined to 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 say yes is everything and they're very just just cheerful in a weird type of way oh master your thoughts (laughs) Yes, they're raw. They're very raw indeed, Mrs. Crookshanks. <laughs> Crookshanks. 
Great, great scene. So we get our first taste of Adrian. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll point out, I don't, we might have missed this or it might be in the future still in the show, but there's a, a brief shot of Dr. Manhattan on Mars. Yeah. And he is building something. And a Reddit user pointed out that the thing that he is building and Adrian's castle mm-hmm. look the same. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, great observation. I got to check that out again and see because it did look like it was type of a building that he, he destroyed or what have you. You know. Yeah, and then he knocks it down. Yeah. So, and we, I, we we know he loves knocking stuff down or whatever, building it and taking it down. Up and crash, you know. Yeah. I mean, my question is: Is that really Doctor Manhattan on Mars? Like, where's the real Doctor Manhattan? Oh man. If that's like a shell of his consciousness, just to be there to make everyone like play nice and stuff. You you and your He's conspiracies. Off the you know, I, I want to think it is Doctor Manhattan. So. You know. Okay, fair enough. Right. It's Doctor Manhattan until we tell her here otherwise. We declared it as such here on Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, so it is true. That's right. just the rule. Next thing we <clears throat> okay. do is we cut to a dinner scene with the um, chief, you know, Judd and his family, and Angela's family. Unforgettable's playing, which is the the in-universe song used for nostalgia by Adrian. Yep. In both the movie and the book, yep. also. Mm-hmm. So Unforgettable plays. Judd does a little coke. No, 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 candy. <laughs> Which is again another way to properly reference 1985. Right, right. right. In Miami Vice, also <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my boy Donnie. Miami Vice. You think there was some cocaine involved in any way in the Miami oh. Vice show or cases they would have been invested? Hey, neither here nor there, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Judd does some coke, and we are treated to this dinner table scene mm-hmm. that's. This is more. This is one of those things that makes me think there's more than meets the eye to Angela's family, right? Yeah. Because there seems to be a, a sort of a sort of familial closeness between these people that right. sort of goes beyond their professional relationship. Right. I think exactly right. So, so there's something else to that. Again, there's what we're saying. It is the liminal and the subliminal. Right. So the subliminal seems to have more than the liminal. Right. Um, they basically. So we find out that uh, Angela lied to Judd. Yeah. But we don't know why. Right. We don't know what she was actually doing while Judd was at uh, Black Oklahoma, which he's not allowed to call it. <laughs> he's not allowed. Uh, and we find out that Judd played Curly, who was the hero of Oklahoma. Right, right. He was the main character when he was in school. And then he sings, um, we're, we're, people will we're, think we're, we're in love. Yeah, we were treated to his, you know, you know, everybody's shocked that he's, a, you know, a good singer and everything, you know, and he goes into But his... Don Johnson came out with songs. Damn. This is way better than her. <laughs> If you guys listen, maybe this is just because I grew up in the '90s. But the MTV once in a while would do the worst music videos of all time, yeah. and Heartbeat was always like number two. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. I highly recommend checking it out just for fun, just for funsies. Uh, really, really awful. In fact, well, 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 Sam, well, just so well, we don't keep it too serious in the show notes, let's let's drop. Yeah, let's, let's this, drop. This, this, this Heartbeat I'll, I'll, in there too. I'll put, I'll put it in the show notes. That's Thanks. funny. Because we got some heavy stuff, <clears throat> yeah, and it's important. Is. And you know. One of the things we are different, we're different. We want to be different from other podcasts because we want to look at the academic and we want to look at the real and the historical. Right. Um, that's one of the things I'm a super nerd about. So we're going to talk about it. So that video from Emery is going to be real heavy duty. This will be more fun for everybody. So hopefully enjoy Heartbeat by Don Johnson. Don Johnson. All right. Now we um, and then we cut to um, the chief and Angela outside talking about what they found in the uh, Seven Calvary's, you know, um, lair. Trailer. Watch batteries. This is where they say Manhattan level watch batteries, the old ones. Mm-hmm. And um, then Judd goes home. Is this where he says that TikTok thing? He goes TikTok. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, you know, we're just the talking trailer. about the end of the world. TikTok, 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 TikTok. You know, he's he's um, basically telling Angela he's just as concerned as she is, even though he's not. Yeah. You know, you know. He um, says, "I'm worried as fuck." Yeah, yeah. Even though you know he doesn't really display on his face, you know, he is. Uh, um, he's basically just as concerned as she is about all the events that's going on. And the reason yeah. why the Seventh Cavalry is back after three years, you know, why are they back? Yeah, you know, he's worried. He's not just a little bit worried. Yeah, he's very worried. Because they, um, they, 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 these are dangerous people. You know, the whole White Knight. We'll get a little bit, little bit more about that. But you know, it wasn't a, um, it wasn't a, um, a small thing that happened. You know, the police. That's the reason why the police are dressed in, you know, masks now. So now you don't know where they are. They're secret. Mm-hmm. So secret police. Um. Now here is where I wrote 
<clears throat> in my first notes from Sunday night, mm-hmm. I wrote, oh my god, yes, OMG, yes, with a bunch of S's. And that's because this is the Miniman promo for American Hero Story yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. It's, uh, it's really cool. It yeah. gives us a shot to everybody. How many... Did you feel like some of those like still shots were from the movie? Like that... that Night Owl looked like the Night Owl from the and, movie and, a little and bit. The, and the Silk Spectre looked like. Was um, that Carla Kunkino? It, it 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 looked like her, but we we know it wasn't. So it was a great rendition and a great flash and everything. The the cut to that was really jarring because I didn't know what to think of the music. Yeah. You know, the the way the music their their theme music for that show and everything how that played it played like a cartoonish you know type of thing. But we find out again that um you know they 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 move away from that. The, I love the way the direction is for this show, just period and everything. They use music and then cut the music when it goes to a um, you know, particular you know, a character making a comment or whatever. Um, this pulled away, and then we see, um, we see Judd on the phone, you know, talking mm-hmm. to the governor. You know, the governor, <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> he said, "We gave him a taste of what it's like when you take one of ours." Right, 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 right. He said, right. Smells good job. And, and then, then uh, Judd gets a call saying via yeah, Charlie's awake. He gets he says, a page. I'm going to put on my uniform and head over. A page. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. See, <laughs> I keep thinking about cell phones like they're real. Right, 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 right. No, no cell phones or computers in this world, people. You know, so no they get cell pages. phones. Right. There are no cell phones. That's crazy. <laughs> he gets a page and has None. to physically go to call, call somebody back on the landline. You know, think about that in 2019. Charlie's alive. He's mm-hmm. going to go see Charlie. He's going to go to the, to the hospital in his uniform. Mm-hmm. He tells his wife, I'll have one of the boys drive me. Pointedly does not right. have one of the boys drive him. Goes by himself. Rides over some spike strips. Right. And then we see some flashing lights. And then the scene ends. So we're not... No one knows what happened. Right. And then we have Angela and Cal having sex. Well, back back up a little <laughs> bit. Back up a little bit. So during that scene, we see him getting, um, you know, with his uniform and everything on. But... It slowly pans. It was, was it him and his dad in that picture? Yeah. Some there's what, that old what, picture. What, You're yeah, right. What else, what is what is going with that old picture? So you know, I guess we'll get some revelation about that. But they 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 stood on that for a reason. So it's something suspicious going on with my boy Donnie, aka Judd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some weird with Judd. So Judd is you know it looks like an ambush is what mm-hmm. it looks like. Yeah. Anytime you roll over spike strips, you know those don't grow naturally. They don't. <laughs> they don't, Not they don't on grow. Road, they don't. Oh. Not in a row. No, they they tend to happen right. off in the woods. Pick them, pick them, and take them down. Yep. Uh, so Cal and Angela are having sex. Angela says she's almost there, but the phone keeps ringing. The phone keeps ringing. The phone keeps ringing. She picks up, and it's a voice. And the voice says, <laughs> you know, a familiar "There's voice. a. Tr- are you Marcus's? Are you Marcus Abar's son? Is what he says. Are you Marcus's son? She says yes. And he goes, "All right, something you need to see." He says, uh, "Oak tree. It's on some hill." Don't wear no, come alone. Don't wear no mask either. Is what he says, right? Don't wear no mask. Oh, no, I wrote down the quote earlier. One second here. All right, quote. Ah, oh, this isn't going to be worth it at all. <laughs> this is a mistake to keep looking. For. He says, uh, "Don't wear no mask." And then that's all I wrote. Obviously, that was not worth it. Oh man, and that's, then, that was a hell of know, a setup right? there, Scott. Hashtag hey Scott, fart, guys. That's what a wet fart smell uh, sounds like. Uh, in case you ever wanted to know what a wet fart smell like sounds like, I can smell it. But, uh, All right. So, so she yeah. gives. So she does that thing, right? This is where she does that thing with the um. The, 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 with she, the headboard, right? Yeah, with the headboard, you know, getting her weapons and everything. That was just so cool to me. You know, uh, get the shotgun, hand she something pulled, to her. Um, pulls a handgun out of like the chimney or something. Chimney, yeah, yeah. Hands it to her husband and says, "Okay, I'm headed out." Um, make sure that, you know, you, you fire on anybody. <laughs> if it's not me, you know, you fire on anybody that Shoot comes them to the door. before they get to the porch. Exactly. That I did have. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So All right. we see her driving. She drives out. Yep. And she comes upon a tree. Um, it's a and... big light, you know. Um, she yells for them to turn off the light or she'll shoot. And then we see a revelation of Chief Judd hanging from the tree. Chief Judd hanging from the tree with the old man. Old man that we've seen at the, the bakery. In front of the bakery who had previously asked Angela, do you believe I can lift 200 pounds? Because mm-hmm. he would have to, that's what he would have to do to get Judd up there. <laughs> and, and he's holding 
he's holding the sheet of paper from from 1921 that says watch over this child right so i believe this to be that that person right, right? the child from yeah. the opening scene is also this old man at the end right he's 100 and 105 106 years old mm-hmm. and then we the shot here is a shot of the rope we follow the line of the rope as it goes from the tree up to the branch and then and then down to judd and then we see the the uh his badge the splash of blood on it just like the comedian's badge yeah and, and then um, uh, the episode. Do you know what the name of the song is? You know, then the song plays. You know what the name of the song is? The well, I heard the end of the lyrics and everything. It's the title of the episode. You know, it's from the, Oklahoma. The title of the episode is from Oklahoma. <clears throat> the name of this song is "Poor Judd Is Dead." <laughs> and, <laughs> and I did not know this that. Scene, <laughs> yeah, this scene in in Oklahoma is in, it's near the beginning, uh-huh. and Curly, the hero of Oklahoma, and Judd, who's the villain of Oklahoma, uh-huh. um. They and like Curly goes over to Judd's house and says like Why don't you kill yourself? Everyone will think it's so pretty in the coffin. So that whole song is him describing like how great you'd look, how right. great you look, how right. great you look. Right. And then at the end he goes, Well, it's too bad. It's summer. We gotta bury him. He won't keep because it's summer and we're running out of ice. Like this super like, uh, <laughs> like random line. It's just a crash line. joke, man. right? Oh man, yeah. So so that's what the uh, that's what that's all about. Yeah, that's the reason why we um, had the episode title right in front of back of him. You know, at the beginning of the episode and everything, and this is how the episode ends. Such a great um, beginning, ending to cap everything off. <clears throat> you know, to box everything in and to make it a complete whole. You know, episode and everything. Such a such a dynamic episode, there, Scott. It it, it really really is. Um, I'm I'm just so the, you know, the, the, it was the, phenomenal the, from the standpoint of the. Uh, yeah. The the first thing because uh, I was watching them with, with my wife and everything. The first thing she said after the episode was, she said, "I think I'm going to be confused." <laughs> <laughs> this is this is definitely there's a lot of rooms. It's it's a it's, a, know, it's a, a lot to unpack and everything. And um, yeah. I was telling Scott as I was watching it, rewatching it a second time, um, trying to do my notes and everything. And we had to just delay, you know, the podcast a little bit because it was so much to unpack there. You know, in the, um, this first episode, but you know, we got through it. It's it was, man. <laughs> I cannot wait till this next episode comes. You it's know, it's, dense. It's, it's, and you know, and I'll say this. You know, I read I read some of the um, like the season reviews. Yeah. And they said they showed the first six episodes to critics, mm-hmm. and they said the first two episodes are like a like a dialectic. So ah, okay. you know, a lot of the stuff that's opened up in one is closed in two, and you should okay. look at it as one okay. kind of one unit. So uh, I'm I'm super duper excited for next week. Um. I am, you know, I'm going to write some articles about the PDPedia stuff. If we get bored later in the week, maybe we'll record an app on it. Yeah. Uh, what, I'm what, not what, sure Because I didn't even know about the PDPedia stuff until, um, you know, Scott texted me about uh, um, last night regarding it. And, um, hey, I found it, it first. It, 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 That's <laughs> internet points for me. <laughs> internet points for me. It made everything that much more better that this is a show that has extended lore, extended um, stuff in the universe that made you want to research. I was telling Scott, this Pedia stuff, this Pedia stuff is actually, to me, a little bit more interesting than the actual episode yeah. was. But the episode was great in itself. So it makes the whole experience that much more better. So if you're well, just like more, absolute there's more nerd, information in the PDPD is about the people we want to know about. Yes, like what yes. the heck happened here? What the heck happened? Right, here? right. And I'm a right. history nerd, so the, this this longer, more fleshed out alternate history of yeah, America it, it, is so it, interesting it, to it, me too. It fleshes itself out, and I don't know what Alan Moore or if, if he's going to even broach this particular Watchmen and everything because it expands on everything that him and Don, you know, um, um, Dave Gibbons and John Higgins created back in '85, but. Oh man, it, it's it's such a great love letter to what they originally wrote, you know, and created. That um, it's just an extended experience. It doesn't touch anything that happened before. So nothing has changed as far as the canon that happened back in '85. All it does is just continue on because you really want to know. It makes you really uh, um, happy and um, that you you're knowing what happened with the history of this universe after the squid isn't it? You know, after right. everything that happened in New York. You know, on um, what they called eleven two or whatever. Um, they're not eleven two eighty five. Right, right, right. You know, um, it makes you uh, it makes you appreciate that there were a lot of changes and a lot of emotional stuff that people went through that um, based on what happened with the squid. And imagine 
this universe, as grounded as it is in this HBO show and the way, in the way they made it seem, and the, the, the tidbits of weirdness, that the squid is an incident that actually happened. You know, not the movie. You know, not the movie ending. The actual um, comic book ending actually happened in this universe. You know, and it's still happening. And it's still happening. <laughs> like it's not. It wasn't a one and done. It's no, rain and squids. It's rain and squids. Hallelujah! <laughs> it's rain and squids. And as much as I can sing of that for free. All right, so so we'll cut it off there. Make sure that you guys are checking us out. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube at our YouTube Neurocyclopedia channel. Make sure that you're um checking us out on all our podcast. You know, on our podcast is Sam and Watcher. Wa- Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. You know, on Apple Podcasts, on uh, Spotify, Twitter. You know, all those great places. Um, make sure that you email us if you like what you heard from us today. You know, this is our feedback um, feedback and everything is watching Watchmen and nerdcyclopedia.com. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and join. Make sure you join our Facebook group. You know, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen group right on Facebook. And keep your eyes peeled to this feed. Keep your eyes on this feed because when I say that we have some surprisingly good guests coming up, I'm serious. It's going to be. Awesome and be awesome, really cool. Like I said, we don't get specific until it's in the can, and we'll tell you about it. Uh, but right now, you know, things are looking great. Uh, we're going to have a wide variety of experts, and and hopefully yeah, other yeah, people yeah. come on and discuss. And because uh, because we're yeah, not I the mean, only, we're real excited about that. We're we're not the only Watchmen fans out there, and people want to talk about this thing. It was the talk of Twitter tonight. You know, the night that the episode came on, and it was like mm-hmm. a full twenty four hours. People are still, you know, part, you know, um, talking about it, you know, dissecting it. It's just so much layers to this universe that is is really great that they actually got a creator in um, Damon Lindelof that actually appreciates and understands more importantly that you know that this material um, is 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 uh, um, is not something to be taken lightly. That you can't just paint do by the numbers like Zack Snyder did with the movie. You actually have to have an understanding of the um, material to really flesh out this universe, which is looks like they really done a lot of research and a lot of put a lot of thought, you know, into. And also Lindelof, in addition to the track record, has the cachet to do it the way he wants. Mm -hmm. And when they say, we want you to change this, he can be like, no. (laughs) I mean, that's 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 worth so much. That's that's just who he is. is. All right, so we'll see you guys next week. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that be. We'll see you guys next week. And basically, keep watching The Watchmen. And make sure you keep listening to our podcast. Peace out. Or else. Or else. <laughs> All right, guys.